Uh, meanwhile, President Trump's budget is due out tomorrow. And Charlie Gasparino reporting, this is a riff among high-ranking White House staff. Uh, once again, Charlie, is it the same ideological and it's it's going to be fault line. Yeah, I would say yes. And it's um, what we will see here in the budget. And it'll be interesting to see like what survives and what doesn't. Survive. Does the border adjustment tax survive this? Does a carbon tax somehow make its way in? Uh, those are the sort of things that are being debated inside. Well, who's pushing those things? Well, I will, I'll tell you in a second. Those are the sort of things that are being debated. And it's probably the biggest showdown yet of the Trump administration. A lot of people thought it was Reince Priebus and Steve Bannon. That was over more picayune uh, uh, pol uh, personnel matters. This is between Steve Bannon, the senior advisor, the nationalist, the guy, the former Breitbart, uh, chief of Breitbart, versus Gary Cohn, the former number two at Goldman Sachs, who even people inside the administration would concede is a liberal. I mean, how he got in there is a whole other story. Uh, Donald Trump has a very uh, interesting and, and sort of unique management style. He, he, he had a gut feeling, from what I understand, about Cohen, about, his, about how he is, wanted to bring him in. And now you see those ideological fault lines uh, uh, manifesting themselves inside the budget. Uh, Let me ask you, though, is that unusual, when, uh, particularly when you surround yourself with CEOs, generals, A-type personalities, these sort of alpha males, I mean, President Trump, I'm sure, has dealt with these sort of situations before in their private life. I mean, ultimately, he's going to be the one who makes these I think, final decisions. Yes, I, but I think when you throw in your in key economic positions and power positions, people of such diverse um, uh, ideological uh, uh, persuasions. Um, you know, when you in the Obama administration, I don't think there were any supply side e economists <laughs> around, right? right. Uh, in Bush, G H in G W Bush's administration, I don't think there were any far left liberals uh, or very few in real right. policy making positions. What you have here is two people who are diametrically opposed to, uh, in the way the governor the government should be run. Steve Bannon, a nationalist, not a free trader, for lower taxes and less government. Gary Cohn, not a free, a free trader who's essentially a globalist. But he likes low taxes, too. I mean, there are some I, things I, I that tie them all we together. We don't know right? that. I think Gary really? Cohn might like less, let lower business-related taxes, but not, but not on other issues. And here, here, let's be real clear. Gary Cohn supported President Obama's, you know, the first four years. He only changed afterwards when Obama started attacking the banks and right. imposing regulations. So he essentially opposed universal, uh, supported universal health care and, and, and because Obama ran on taxes on the rich, he, he supported higher taxes. So then how do you see it shaking out? Because right now I think the betting is, is still against a border adjustment tax. And against I haven't heard, the, much, the, the I haven't heard much about a carbon tax, although I know that, that President Trump has some unique ideas on, on the climate and, and, and that may be different than, than traditional Republican orthodoxy. Um, so you, you hear no on the border adjustment? Absolutely. Okay. I, you know, that would be from pressure from Congress, you know, Tom Cotton and a lot of states where there's high retail presence don't like the border adjustment taxes. It hurts Walmart and those and retailers. Um, the I business roundtable wasn't too keen on it yesterday either. Yeah, but Trump is not a big guy on sure. the business roundtable. Sure. I, I don't know. I mean, I can just tell you this. If you look at Trump publicly, Gary Cohn and Steve Bannon are both there all the time. It's not like he's picking sides just yet. And here's the thing, but Charles. But we'll know a lot more t when the budget comes out. We will, right? and we'll know a lot more as it manifests itself. And here's one other thing. This thing does have a, ch uh, have a, have a um, potential for blowing up into a showdown where one of them leaves. There's no doubt about that, given the personalities involved here. They both, by the way, we should point out, I, there's a whole write-up about this on FoxBusiness.com, which gets into the nitty-gritty. But these are two, let's face it, two wicked alpha males who have very strong opinions about the way this country is, is, should be run, and they're that close to the president. By the way, uh, the Trump administration brought on another Goldman person. I saw that. Right? So you got a deputy tr uh, treasury secretary. Although, unlike Gary Cohn, Donovan is a longtime Republican. He was a big Romney supporter. But, right. you but, know, they all you know, have a similar DNA if you work at same Goldman. Same kind of DNA. <laughs> and, and, and hopefully right. they all have the great ideas and at least know how to put a blueprint together to get this economy going. Uh, you got to believe that. You know, hopefully, they make a lot of money at Goldman. Maybe they can make money for everybody else. All right, nothing wrong with that. We